Uh, you had a full ride scholarship to the UH for football and baseball, I believe. Um, how difficult of a decision was it to turn that down and pursue baseball? It was very tough. Uh, you know, it was one of those things, uh, you know, my mom definitely wanted me to get a good education. And, uh, you know, she definitely pushed that. You know, she sent me to a private high school for a reason. That was to get a good education, uh, you know, to hopefully, you know, do well in sports and so on and so forth. But, uh, you know, when I, uh, when that day came, it was definitely tough. Um, you know, but I told my mom, I said, Mom, college will always be there. Uh, I may never have another chance to go pro. Um, so, you know, it was, it was definitely a tough decision. But, you know, when I made the decision, I told myself, I'm going to go till I can't stop. You know, I wanted to be, I wanted to go there and I wanted to work hard. I wanted to, uh, you know, as they always say, until they take the jersey off your back, I don't want to quit. And, uh, you know, there was times that I definitely, through the minor leagues, there were struggles. And, you know, there's times I wanted to come home, you know, and, uh, but my dad said, "Hey, just remember, you come back home, you're never going back." And uh, you know, that was one word of you know words of advice that I will always remember is that, hey, if I gave up, you know, when I wanted to, I was never going to get another chance to come back and play pro ball. So I stuck with it, worked hard. But you know, going back to the question is, uh, you know, it's definitely a tough decision. But you know, like I said, I told my mom, I said, "Mom, education was going to be there. College ain't going nowhere. You know, I can go to college when I'm 35, 40 years old. Hopefully, I have a good career. You know, and I can go back to college when I'm done." But. Uh, you know, so it was definitely tough, but I talked mom out of it, and uh, you know, I was able to go and turn pro. And uh, you know, hey, I'm having a wonderful time so far. Cool. Uh, the Phillies, you guys are all pretty aggressive, work hard. Is that something Coach Manuel stresses? Yeah. Um. You know what, Charlie uh, is one of those guys where he lets you play. I think uh, he's the kind of manager that you want to play for. Uh, you know, a guy that's going to let you go out there, going to let you play the game that you play. You know, not going to put too much stress on you. He's not going to bash you in the media. He's going to come and call you in his office. He wants to talk to you about things. So. You know, when you come to the field every day, you know what you have out of your manager. That's the kind of guy you want. The guy that's going to be in your corner. Uh, you know, not a guy that's going to yell at you and stress you out even more than what you know this game already does. So, you know, he's the kind of manager that we call a player's manager. That he takes care of his players. He goes out there. He wants his players to do, to do the best. And you know, he's got two rules: is to be on time and play hard and hustle. Um, so, you know, you can't ask much from you know much more of a manager than that. You wear a rarely fashion double eared helmet. Is that because that's how we used to play back in the day, or just because you're switching? Well, I mean, yeah, no, I did that. No, I did that in the minor leagues, and uh, you know, when I got to the big leagues, I put the one flap on for a while, and I was kind of like, I felt uncomfortable, and uh, you know, so myself, well, why change? You know, I did the minor leagues, I did it in the little league. You know, what's, well, why not keep it up? Plus, being a switch hitter, I don't want to worry about putting and carrying two different helmets. So, and, you know, some of those things factor. Do you have a preference, right or left-handed bat? No. Um, you know, there's times where you feel good from the right side, and there's times where you feel great from the left side. So. Uh, you know, uh, you just got to keep playing in this game. Uh, you know, you play 160 games for a reason. Um, you know, you're going to go through your ups and downs. You're going to have your slumps. You're going to have your struggles. But, you know, to go out there and just keep working. Number eight, is there a reason why you chose that number? Um, You know what? My brother was number eight in high school. My mom was born on January 8th. Oh. So, you know, eight has some significance. Uh, okay. You know, I was eight in high school. Uh, but when I first got here, uh, they, were, they gave me number eight. So I was oh. lucky enough and, uh, you know, I really didn't have to ask uh, yeah. for number eight. But I was given number eight my first year here. So, you know, it was definitely a, a number that, uh, you know, definitely uh, it had some ties to, to, to me. Uh, congratulations on winning the Gold Glove last season. Uh, do, you have, do you take pride in your defensive skills as much or more than your batting skills? Uh, you know what, uh, I definitely take pride in my offense, uh, you know, a little more, I think. But I, I mean, I take pride in my defense, too. Um, you know, I think defense is such a big factor of the ball game that, you know, you can never struggle, you should never slump on defense. Um, you know, yeah, you're going to go through struggles to play. You're going to go through 0 for 30s. You're going to go for, you know, 2 for 50s. But on defense, you should never struggle because that does, you know, that's not something that you got to worry about hitting. You got to worry about seeing the ball. Um, you just got to worry about, you know, staying focused and making good plays and going out there and playing hard. What's the biggest rush? Home run, stolen base, diving catch. You know what? They all have their different uh, different life. Uh, you know, of course, if you hit a walk-off home run, that's more exciting. When you make a diving catch in the game, that's exciting. Uh, you know, he's still in the base thing, big, big situation. So, you know, everyone has its own weight, I think. Uh, you know, but for me, I would say, uh, you know, hitting a home run in a crucial situation, I think, to me, would be the most exciting thing. Uh, you became the first Hawaii-born positional player in the All-Star game. You had the support of Philadelphia, Hawaii, and everybody else. You had 15.6 million internet votes, which set a record. Uh, how does that make you feel to have so much support? Oh, I mean, it made me feel great. Um, that really showed what, what Philly fans, what Hawaii fans, and what the passion of baseball has. Uh, and, you know, uh, the blessing that I had to be able to vote it in, uh, to get that amount of votes, uh, uh, you know, almost double what the like, guy the previous year had, I think was such an amazing thing. And you know, it really showed how much Philly fans and 
know, people around the world really care, I guess, about how I play the game and how I approach the game. So, you know, it was definitely a nice thing. Uh, you got a hit in the All-Star game? Uh, explain your experience, the whole experience. Um, everything was great. <laughs> I mean, every, every, every bit of it was what I expected. Um, you know, there was a few things, of course, getting to meet President Obama again and, uh, you know, just listening to the, you know, the five living presidents talk uh, before the game on, on the big screen about, you know, just about uh, all stars among us, people who have helped in the community. I mean, you know, just every moment they had its catch, and uh, you know, being introduced as a starter, and then going out there and getting my first hit, my first at bat, my All Star game, or my first All Star game. You know, so it, it was some fun times. On a Friday, the Phillies inducted Harry Callis into the Phillies Wall of Fame. After a recent home run, you pointed to the booth where he used to sit. Uh, Callis has a history in Hawaii, U.S. Army, and the Hawaii Islanders announcer. What kind of an impact did he have on you? Um, you know what? He had that, that that voice that I think all you know. I remember growing up as a little kid watching inside the NFL at my grandma's house, yeah. and uh, you know, thinking to myself, whose voice is this that I'm hearing? And uh, so you, need you know, that. yeah. I mean, it was just you know, when I, and then when I came here in 05, I remember hearing the voice when I got called up, and I'm like, hold on, this is the guy's <laughs> voice that I used to hear. Right. You know, when I was a little kid, when I used to watch inside the NFL, NFL films, and. You know, it was just like, whoa, this is the man, this is the guy, Harry Callis, the guy that I remember growing up watching inside the, you know, NFL films and hearing that voice and, yeah. uh, you know, to actually meet the guy in person, uh, you know, we definitely had a bondage. Uh, I remember uh, one of my walk-off home runs, he said, Victorino, no Kaoi. Oh, you know, wow. that was one thing he always would call me, he goes, you know, hey, you know, Victorino, no Kaoi, he would always say that. So, uh, you know, he definitely had his roots to Hawaii, I think, uh, you know, his first wife was from Hawaii. Oh, and. Okay. Uh, you know, he definitely started with the Islanders and did some broadcasting there. So, you know, he definitely has some roots to, uh, to, to the Islands. Uh, what does the future hold for Shea Victorino? What does the future hold? Uh, <laughs> just try to be the best player I can be. Um, you know, to go out there and try to keep succeeding, trying to keep getting better. Uh, you know, in this game, there's always room for improvement. And I think, uh, you know, you go out there, you work hard every day. That's all I can say, you know, is that uh, you know, I try to go out there and work hard as I can. I try to play as hard as I can because, hey, you never know what can happen. You know, tomorrow may be my last day. Today might be my last day. I might get hurt and never play again. But, you know, as long as I know I'm doing 100%, uh, that's all I can ask about myself. Do you have any words of advice for your young fans out there? Please yeah, um, you know, I think the kids in Hawaii, like I said, I, mean, I said it earlier, that, you know, I think a lot of Hawaii kids don't understand and they struggle with the fact of leaving home. Um, you know, to me, my advice to them was, hey, if you get the opportunity to leave, um, you know, take the chance, see what's out there, um, you know, and, uh, you know, work hard as a little kid, you know, and work hard now because when you work hard now, it'll help you in the end. Um, you know, I was one of those kids where I was, you know, I was blessed by God. I had a lot of, you know, natural abilities and, uh, you know, I didn't work as hard as some of my, my friends. And I always say to myself, if I did, how much better a player would I have been when I first got to the big leagues? But, you know, I think with hard work and dedication, uh, a lot of things can happen. And how about your general fans? General fans? Message to them. <laughs> thank you guys for everything. Uh, you know, thank you for voting me to the All-Star Game. Um, you know, just enjoy. I think, uh, you know, when you come to watch our team, that's what we do is we go out there, we have fun, we try the best we can, we play the game hard, and, uh, you know, we just try to go out and win every night. Cool.